Basic Blouse Designing 101. And welcome to SureFit Designs, where your patterns match your lifestyle and last a lifetime. I'm Glenda, whimsically known as Glenda the Good Stitch. Well, how do you get from a basic muslin into a finished fashion garment? For those of you who aren't familiar with SureFit Designs, SureFit Designs is a fitting system that gives you a master pattern that allows you to blueprint your body shape and size, and in the industry that blueprint is called a sloper. Now the sloper, once you've got it all drawn to your body configurations, should be tested in a muslin. But of course, we want to not be wearing that, we want to be wearing fashion clothing, and how do you get there? I'd like to introduce to you a friend of mine, Joy. She's also a SureFit Designs customer and has been for about three years. Rather than sewing just the basic bodice muslin, she sewed her entire dress. But then you can see she's transitioned into the finished fashion garment. Joy sews a lot of blouses. In fact, she has an entire closet full of SureFit Designs garments, many of them blouses. And Joy will get questions as, how do you make that blouse you're wearing? And I also get questions of how do you make the blouse that Joy is wearing? Well, Joy has her own blog. It's called Joyful Expressions. And the web address is right here for you to take a look at. And she uh, posts a lot of the photographs of the garments that she um, has sewn. So if you want more details and see more than I'm showing you here today, please go on over to Joyful Expressions. Now I'm going to show you some of her basic blouses. Joy typically doesn't wear anything that's got a collar on it. She doesn't like anything up high around her neck. So you'll notice V-necks and scoop necks. She usually also does a short sleeve, but it's not uncommon to see her in a three-quarter length or a sleeveless blouse. And of course, what's important here is the choice of fashion fabric. You can make anything look better than muslin when you're using fashion fabric. So let's analyze what she's doing with this blouse, or the blouse design in, in general. And as I show you these things, realize that all of the instructions are in your SureFit Designs dress kit. And I'll tell you the page numbers that you'll be able to find this information on. So here is a basic bodice, and I've drawn it off in a 40-inch um, chest or bust circumference. So that means I've used the 40-inch dot on the master pattern. And this particular bodice has 2.5 inches of ease. If you were to measure from underarm point to center front, and then from underarm point to center back, and add the two together and double it, you would see that this 40-inch um, bust circumference measurement would have two and a half inches of ease. So this pattern actually is measuring 42 and a half inches. Now Joy, when she does her blouses, leaves the ease as is. But you know wearing ease is very, very personal. And you may want to add more. And so if you'd like an additional inch of ease, all you need to do is go up to the next measurement dot. You would go up in this case to 41. If you want two more inches of ease, go up to the 42. And if you change the ease at the underarm on the bodice, you must do the same on the sleeve on either side. Go up the respective number of dots so that the sleeve fits into the armhole. All right, now from this basic bodice you obviously need the bottom portion of your blouse. So now we're going to bring in the skirt pattern. And in the SureFit Designs dress kit, you get obviously the bodice, the skirt, the sleeves, and a collar collection if you'd like to put collars on your blouses or dresses. But here's the skirt pattern, and I don't need the whole thing. It's just up to the hip level. And another thing that you're going to see on, on the Sherfa Designs Master Patterns is that they have a little marking that looks like the letter T that flopped over on its side, and it's called the sideways T marking, or at least that's what I've called it. And you'll find it on the skirt as well as on the bodice. And we want to line those sideways T markings up. So in order to show you this without the um, influence of all the lines of the master pattern. Let me just remove that master pattern. And now to line up the sideways T markings, just make sure that you have your center front of your bodice on one of the grain markings on your grain board. 
and then take the sideways T marking from the skirt and line it up to the sideways T marking on the bodice and in doing so and make sure that that's exactly on the same grain marking on the board and that will position the um, side seams where they're supposed to be or the side waist points I should say and it will look like that and it positions one dart directly underneath the other and you'll want to tape both the top side and the underside of this transition now you've turned it into a blouse that you can tuck in or wear out over top of your skirts or pants. Um, if you're an hourglass figure, like the example that I've drawn here today, you're not going to want your blouse to nip in tight to your waist like that, not for this particular kind of style like Joy is wearing. So what we're going to do is just make a smooth transition between the high hip area and the bottom leg of the dart. And now you've got um, a side seam that's just going to hang down comfortably at your side seam. And one other thing I should mention is that this is called a strip down pattern. It doesn't have any seam allowances on it. And it's best to do your designing like this without seam allowances. Get the changes made, the simple changes that you need to do, and then come back and add your 5 8 inch seam allowances with the slots provided on the designing stylus. And of course, there are other videos showing you how to do that as well. Next, what else do we need to do to make it a blouse like Joy wears? Well, as I said and showed you, she usually does a scoop neck or a V-neck. And so for a V-neck, you'll want to measure down from the hollow in your neck down to where it's comfortable on your body. Just as an example here today, I'm going to measure down five inches. And notice that I'm going to come out at a right angle here for about a half an inch because it's from there that I'm going to transition up into the neckline. And again, because Joy doesn't like anything tight at her neckline, she usually makes that neck point on the shoulder line um, a little bit uh, narrower shoulder line so it's pulling it away from her neck. And then you'll use your designing stylus to make a nice uh, scooped neck like this. There we go. And another neckline that she does is a V-neck. And so with that, what I'm going to do, oftentimes people think to do a V-neck you just do a straight line, but you don't. Um, and the reason for that is you want the V-neck shape to hug your uh, chest a little bit better. So you can see I'm using a slight curvature on the designing stylus, and I'll just take it down to that same five inch depth like that. So now you've got a couple of options. Now for designing the v-necks or any style of neck for that matter, um, neckline styling options you'll find on page 19 of your dress kit instruction book and to join the skirt together with the bodice with this sideways tee that's actually on page 32 of your dress kit instruction book. And the collar collections, of course, I said is a master pattern if you want to add a collar to this. And there's also more collar information on page 23 of the Dress Kit Instruction Book. So what do we need to add next to this blouse? Well, if this is center front right here, the blouse needs to button up. So that ne means it needs a button extension. And to add a button extension, Again, you'll find this uh, instruction on the same page as adding facings in your instruction book. And it, um, that page is page 22 in the instruction book. So now, what have I got under there? A little lump that was in my way. I've added three quarters of an inch beyond center front. And I'm going to draw, this is now the button extension so that you can button your blouse up like this. And I'm going to take that out from the curvature of that neckline for that button extension. Now I do have another video that goes into detail 
on how to design a turnback facing or a sewn on facing and you'll find that in the SureFit Designs Learning Center in the video library. But very quickly what I'm going to show you to do. One of the things that when you're designing your blouse is as you draw off your pattern please make sure that you leave enough tracing vellum on the um, this side of the center front and your button extension because to do a turn back facing it is so super simple all you're going to do is on your button extension is fold your tracing vellum back in position on that button extension and then mark a width that is where are we at I like my facings to be about two and a half inches wide so I'm going to mark that width right here at two and a half inches wide. One of the nice things about working with this tracing vellum is that it's so clear and see-through that it's easy to see underneath what I need to connect to. So I'm going to use this scoop neck as an example of uh, tracing off the facing. So here's the neckline like this and we'll come straight out to the button extension there's the shoulder line and now I'm going to connect up from the hemline like that and I'm going to use the designing stylus oh let's see what kind of a curve do I want here that looks pretty good for the facing and then I'm going to connect uh, let's see what do I want to do there we go all right so that put on the facing for the scoop neck all you need to do is to unfold this and you can see that what I've got now is the exact correct facing shape for that scoop neckline style of blouse and then of course you put in your button positions and there you have it it's basically that simple and so just keep in mind all the beautiful pieces of fashion fabric that are out there and whenever you take your muslin and start sewing it out of fashion fabric the whole world is going to change and it just makes the the whole process fall together for you. You see designing really is very very simple. Once you've got your feet wet and start trying this you're going to end up as I say with this basic blouse that's going to fit you really well. One other thing I should mention is that what do you do with this waist fitting dart that's coming up from the skirt into the apex area here? Well you can do a number of different things. You can completely disregard it if you don't want to have a dart in the front of your bodice. And there's also a dart in the back of the bodice. Or you could sew it in half width. I know Joy oftentimes um, will divide that dart in half and what I, what I mean by sewing it half width is that this dart's basically an inch and a half wide. There's center, there's half, and there's half. And I'm going to just join together like this um, from the dart tips up to that half width. And now you've got a skinny little dart that will shape in your uh, waistline area. So sew it half width, sew it full width, or don't sew it in at all. Those options are all yours. At this point, I'd like to invite you to join the SureFit Designs community if you already haven't. And how do you do that? Well, three very easy steps. Number one, go to surefitdesigns.com and sign up for the newsletter, and when you have, you'll receive free subscription gifts. Number two, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a subscription and a like button right below this video. And we also now have a SureFit Designs um, Facebook community, a user group, where people all over the world are interacting with one another, sharing their designs and sharing their questions. 
Thank you so much for watching and enjoy wearing your basic blouse.